going on guys we're back nhl season is going strong we're we're really early on we're about seven games in for a lot of teams five to seven games but today we're gonna play some crystal ball we'll have a quick look here at a few players who are up and down and what you'll notice in this first of all is i have this filter to psa 10 slabs above a hundred dollars so we'll take a look first at the players that are up one of the things to note is there aren't a heck of a lot of players that are up. we got Nick Robertson, Rasmus Dahlin, obviously off to a super hard, hot start. Ilya Samsonov, Demko, K. Makar. Uh, this 946 sale is not legit. I have reported it, so Kale Makar is not up that much. He's essentially relatively flat. Troy Terry up a little bit. William Nylander, Svech, hot, hot, hot. Another goal tonight. Anyways, Adam Fox, Connor McDavid, those are your players that are up for slabs over $100. Not a heck of a lot of them. Let's look at players that are down. Jack Eichel, Maritz Sider, Cole Perfetti, Josh Norris, Tim Stutzla, Patrick Laine, Raymond Le Look at all these guys. Lots of guys who are down a whole bunch. Miko Ratnan, Nathan McKinnon. Now these are reasonably high percentages too for, for the cards that are just around $100. You know, one sale can change and impact the price and make it look like it's down more than it is but it's still interesting to note that there's a pile of players down and and not so many up one of the other things that i would note is when you take a look at guys like maritz Sider, cole perfetti tim stutzla who are these 2020 and 2021 guys they had their psa 10 come out at a pretty high price and it takes a lot to hold that price right so when you have a guy come out at $800 and what does that player really have to do to hold that price? It's impossible. It's not going to happen. There's no Austin Matthews here. We have no 60 goal scorers. So those prices are inevitably going to move down and we're going to get into that with the predictions. So I'm going to look at a few of the key players and when we're looking at this stuff, you know, it's like, oh, predictions. Yeah, you know, you have yours. I have mine. The, the thing is, we shouldn't be scared to go wrong. You want to have conviction and act on, you know, what you perceive to be value. So long as you've shown some semblance in the past that you know what you're doing, if every player you've ever picked is a loser and, you know, you never win, then, you know, maybe you don't want to do the speculating. So the first guy we're going to have a look at is Rasmus Dahlin. So obviously off to a super hot start. Five goals in his first five games played. He's got three assists with that, so eight points. When I originally put this data together before he scored his fifth goal, he hadn't moved from that $130 mark. Him scoring the fifth, we saw the price movement up to $180. However, that, that sort of didn't impact my price prediction on where I think Rasmus is going to go. So he's up 40% from that move from the 130 to 180. But if we look a little bit further into the data, we see that he has five goals and 18 shots. Shooting at 28%, you know, obviously not sustainable. But what I will say is one of the things that he did good when I went back and, and took a look at his goals, you know, which is sustainable is and is going to help his production is he's doing a great job getting to the center of the ice. Those point shots you want to have from the middle of the ice. It seems like analytics departments are starting to catch on that you shoot from the middle. Those point shots from, you know, off the wall and moving it side to side are far from optimal spots, which is why you see a lot of teams playing the umbrella on the power play because those shots getting it to the middle of the ice, getting those shots from there are just a higher percentage shot. So Rasmus doing a great job of that. If he keeps producing, you know, keeps doing this, I think the ceiling of his card, I would put it about the $240 mark uh, from the $180 where it is now. And if he doesn't score and, you know, he hits a drought, which is going to happen because that 28% shooting percentage is going to come down. I think that card moves back. Um, it's going to be above the 100 USD mark where it's sat for a long time. If we take a look in here from 21, from 21 all the way through, it sat in here and sort of bounced around this $110 mark and, and below that. So that's almost a year in that area. But I think ultimately next off season, the card ends up in the $130 to $150 range. I would I would say if if I if I really had to to guess, I, I would go on the lower end of that and think it gets back to the $130 mark and sort of hovers in there next offseason. Austin Matthews, one goal, five assists, six points in the last seven games. Absolute disaster. Shitty player, right? 
you know, Toronto's top player, he's taken a little bit of heat there. People, obviously, with only one goal. People may talk and... You know, Toronto media is just going to do what they do. Here's the thing. Matthews is a career 16% shooter. He's shooting at 3% this year, okay? So what do you think is going to happen? He's going to start scoring. It's it's a given. That's that's not, like, controversial in the slightest. He's had 32 shots in just seven games. It's actually a great pace, and, and that'll give him an opportunity to have his highest shots on goal percentage from a per-game perspective in his career. He's going to regress to the mean. His goal scoring is going to be inevitable. I called the bottom on this card this summer at 1350 and said it was the easiest buy of the offseason if you were able to and able to get it at that time, despite having many sales above $1,600. And there was a sale actually at almost 1900 his last sale was at 1400 so up from that 1350 but anyways i would look for matthews to be right back at that two thousand dollar plus by mid-march so that's my call two thousand dollar card right here by mid-march also this isn't financial advice okay so these are just fun predictions i'm telling you my thoughts on where i think a card's gonna go so you know make your own decisions and act on your beliefs. I always say trust yourself, and so you should do that. Next player we got here, Merit Sider, one assist in five games played, and Detroit hasn't lost a game in regulation. I think this is a card that was sort of destined to come down from the initial PSA 10s that came out. They hit the market at over 500 bucks, and now uh, Sider's down in and about. Take a look here at 234, um, $234 sales. And I, I think this card is going to settle in by this offseason in the summertime at around the $130 to $160 range, which is what we've seen from other similar players, you know, defensemen who get assists and do these things. So Maritz Sider, $130 to $160 this offseason. So to me, I wouldn't be buying those ciders right now. And I do want to disclose at this point and make sure that, you know, if you haven't watched the channel and aren't familiar with sort of how I do things or, you know, how I talk about hockey cards. I, I'm not saying this because I don't think Brett Sider is a great player. I think Brett Sider is one of the best, you know, young defensemen in the league, like top few, handful, one of the best. However, that doesn't mean that his card is going to be worth the most. There's just, it just player value and, you know, what they bring to their team doesn't equal high card value. I think it's really important to understand that and be honest with yourself in these players. If you take a look at players who are similar in the past and what their card's done, you know, you really only have Kale McCarr, who's an outlier. All the other defensemen have done the same thing. So if you like Maritz Sider and you can hold off until the summertime, I would likely wait until summer to buy it. But, you know, you do you. That's my prediction. This summer, you'll be picking up those Maritz Siders for $150 US. Trevor Zegras. Three goals, one assist, four points in six games played. So he's playing a top six role over there in Anaheim and, and off to a good start. Nothing wrong with that. Four points in six games played. But if we take a look a little bit deeper, uh, we see he's got 10 shots on goal and three goals. Do some quick math. He's shooting at 30%. That's going to change. This kid's got a ton of skill, but it's going to take him some time, you know, to, to just learn the game. And really, we'll see where he can go in terms of his overall career. I definitely think there's a ceiling, but I think Zegris is going to be the same sort of player where we'll know a lot better next year and the year after what sort of player he's going to be. His PSA 10 came out at a price of about $835. We'll take a look there, $835. And currently, there, there was just a low sale recently at 275 So Zegris is going to have to help himself. And I'll tell you that putting up... 60 or 70 points this year which i think is would be a good season for him that's obviously not going to help the card people want to see 90 100 point players looks like the seasons could be high scoring similar to last year so you got to put up the points i don't think zegris is going to do it I, I think he'll have a good year by all other standards i just don't think that he's going to do enough to hold his card and keep holding that price up so i think by next august this is also a card that's below the 200 dollars mark and keep in mind guys all these prices that i quote are in us dollars last prediction cole caulfield les habitants did i say that did i say that well en français 
Francos can let me know. Cole Caulfield, four goals, one assist, five points in five games played. Shooting at 19% right now. So honestly, of a lot of players that I've looked at, not too bad. Likely to come down, but 19% could be an outlier year where he held that percentage. But, you know, more reasonable than a lot of other players. More likely to slow down, however. If he can keep his shots per game pace, and even if that shooting percentage comes down a bit, good shooter is going to be, you know, 13, 14% or so. He can still put up 34 or so goals in 75 games. So that's a legit shot at a 40 plus goal season. And in hockey cards, goals matter. You know, there's a huge premium there. Take a look, Austin Matthews versus Nathan McKinnon. I think a pretty fair example showing that there's a pretty hefty premium to be paid for Austin Matthews versus Nathan McKinnon. You can say, oh, he's in Toronto though. And absolutely that does help it as well. But the card market wants to see goals and Cole Caulfield will have the ability to score goals and is scoring goals. We see his price coming down from $815 and floating over here at about the $430 range. And I think his price is actually held incredibly well, as you can see from like the 500 down to, to, to 430. If his goal scoring falls off, I think we continue to see a decline, obviously, you know, maybe I don't have to say that, but I'll, I'll say that perhaps he goes to below 300 this off season, but if he can keep pace and get 40, well, I think he can hold likely flat and perhaps even move back to the $600 mark, depending on likely the, the pace that he scores those goals. You know, hat tricks are going to help and droughts are something that can really drag the price down. So you want to be a little bit more consistent with that goal scoring. If he scores 50 goals, well, you're going to wish you bought this card today. That's, that's for darn sure. He's got the Habs fans obviously helping to, to hold that card. Overall, I think this card's going to be relatively flat this season. One of the interesting things, though, about this card as well is that it's got a really low gem rate. So the gem rate's 35.3%. And what that means for you people or individuals who... I said you people. Oh my god. So what that means for individuals who don't know what gem rate is, it's when you submit a card, the percentage that are coming back a PSA 10 versus raw. Okay, so 35.3% of cards are coming back as a PSA 10. Therefore, what's happened is he has a pretty low pop. He's got a pop of only 528. That also helps the price as well. To put all my cluttered thoughts together, I think Caulfield's going to have a good season. I think he does hit the 40 goal mark. And with the low pops helping the card as well, I think the current price holds. There, there's going to be a bit of movement along the way, but I think he ends the season between between 425 and 525. To me, Cole is likely the most interesting, you know, young kid out there in the game right now. And there's only one reason for that, and it's just his ability to score. So those are my five predictions, guys. What do you guys think? Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Who did I get right? Who did I get wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Give me your predictions. I'd appreciate it. We're going to audit this. We'll take a look back at this in August and see how I did. But I thank you guys for watching. You know I appreciate it. Hit that like button, subscribe, and we will check you.